Tony with PigBrig. You can visit us at pigbrig.com. And this is another one of our tips and tricks. So if you're in an area where it's very difficult to access and you don't want to transport T-posts, you might be dropping that in with a helicopter, it might be in a very remote location, and you just want to carry a net. It's 50 pounds, it's easy to put in a backpack on your ATV, and you can set this trap just like we do with the T-post, except we have no T-posts, right? We're just in the forest, and we use the cam straps, the hook cam straps that come with the trap to suspend the net. We want to make sure the top of this net is always at five feet, regardless of whether it's on a T-post or whether it's suspended in trees. This arrangement allows for putting it in a more secluded spot, not in the middle of a field, and it really, as you can see, blends in with the environment, not only for people that may not see it, but also for, for pigs to make it feel much more discreet in the landscape. I used orange cam straps here just for depiction purposes so it can highlight how we're connecting to the trees. Pig Brig comes with green straps and the whole trap will camouflage right into the forest environment. I know there's many areas in the country uh, that have very hard soils like in Texas and a setup like this can be placed within a forested or even a sparsely treed environment and be able to suspend the trap and be extremely effective in a whole spectrum of environments. You can get away with five points of contact with trees to create your perimeter. And then on the longer spans in between those main connection points, you'll have to run some guy lines to help support that edge. Because if you get a lot of pigs on the trap and you don't have those intermediate points of contact, you may see the trap get pulled down too much with the risk of pigs escaping over the top. So when you make your connection points to a tree, a couple important aspects. One, I always try to wrap the strap around the tree twice just to prevent slippage. And then when I attach the hook, I always try to turn it down so it's not going to run the risk of popping off the strap. But you can see this has got a lot of tension, so there's not going to be a lot of slack for this to come off. And then, as you can see, this is the seam which typically both of these corners need to go over the top of a T-post. Now we need to catch both of those corners in the hook of our hook cam strap to ensure that that seam is held tight on the top. Now, where we attach the, the lower cam strap, so I use the same concept of wrapping that strap around the tree twice, hook facing down, and then just for an extra degree of security on the mid post cam strap, I run that through the eye of the hook on the hook cam strap so that there's no risk of this hook bouncing and coming off of the strap itself. You try to snug the net right up to the tree and this keeps that net from being able to flex down at all just like being attached to a T-post but you don't have a span of webbing that allows some flexion. So you want to take this strap and run it down through the top of your top rope and then I catch both the eye of that hook where it, the strap comes through and I catch the top of the net. So this will lock that net in. When you set a pig brig in the woods there's some creativity. It's not as rigid in a format as you do using your 10 T post system. So for example here, just using a single hook cam strap, again twice wrapped around the tree to keep it from sliding, we can actually connect to two of the mid post cam straps. Again making sure that this cam strap is going through the eye of the hook versus just putting the hook on the cam strap where it may disengage when pigs have been, have been captured. So just another example of and demonstrating that this is a creative process but still ensuring the fundamentals of trap height and creating some tension on the base net wall ensures optimal success. To optimize the trap function we want to make it as circular as possible. 
and that's obviously very difficult finding trees that are perfectly spaced in the forest. But as an example, just using a one inch sapling, as long as we run a guy wire on it to create some rigidity, it works just as well as having a T-post or a bigger tree. This is not going anywhere because we create a counter force off of this tree and really this little sapling just gives us our vertical support. So this shows how you can hybridize a set in the forest if you don't have a lot of or enough tree options to create that vertical support. You can integrate a few T-posts to help round out your trap. Again, same concept, we're at five feet. We still run a hook cam strap for rigidity off of that. If you don't have the option or the ground is too hard to get a T-post in, you can also go back to a sapling, a small sapling, with a guy wire off the backside and accomplish this same goal. If you don't have a small sapling or you don't have access or, or plan to use T-posts, the other method is to run a rope off an adjoining tree and come down, pull tension and support to give a little more vertical lift on this point of contact. So there's multiple ways you can support a trap the top edge along the trap cap over a long span between other tree contact points. One thing when you're making a forest set without T-posts is your net's not going to be perfectly round and you're not going to have a true center to measure where your anchor stakes need to go. So this is more of a, a artistic creative exercise where we want this, what we call the skirt, the netting on the ground, we want that to lay on the ground and have just a nice curvature going up so it looks and behaves just like it would with metal T-posts and the mid-post cam straps attached. So this is kind of the look that we're trying to get and so when you're trying to place your anchor stakes you don't want to pull it in too tight and you don't want to have it too far out where the net comes down at a right angle because then the pigs are more apt to get tangled as they're pushing in. So the happy medium is just a nice bit of curvature and then you set your, your anchor stake in the ground and that'll keep that net from shifting once the pigs are in the trap. And you replicate that with all five anchor stakes just as you would do with your T-post to ensure the net is balanced and laying on the ground so the pigs can easily push in but then they can't escape. A couple points on trap placement and what to consider when you're setting the trap. In this situation for the demonstration I cut four or five saplings. If I were to make this set, particularly with pigs that are nervous, I would open the seam on the trap as we've designed it. I would have put it around the saplings and then still suspended the net the way it was so that the animals feel more comfortable, the net is more hidden in the landscape and helps ensure that the animals are more likely to enter that trap. It also helps slow down the pigs once they're in there, having some cover keeps them calm, keeps them from getting as much speed running into the trap edge, and keeps them um, as safe and, uh, and calm before you come to, to dispatch those animals. Yeah.